This is a song I grew up singing, uh, and so many of you will know this one as well too. If you if you know it, sing with us. Let's start like this. I heard an old old story how a savior came from glory, how he gave his life from Calvary to save a rich like me. I heard about. Sing it out now. Grace rewrote my story. I'll testify 
by Jesus Christ the righteous, I'm justified. This is my destiny, Lord. This is my destiny, Lord. take a minute to say welcome. If this is your first time here at Cape Cod Church, you're a visitor. We're so glad you're here with us. If you're joining us online for the first time this morning as well, we're just glad you're here with us. If you can take a minute on front of the seat or back of the seat in front of you, there's a little connect card or online. You can click the connect card and just fill that out. Drop it in the box on the way out or fill it out online. It let's us get to know you a little bit better. We also have kids programs available for your young ones. The park and kids town and the loft and they're doing Easter egg hunts and stuff like that. So take advantage of those programs. Your kids are going to have a great time. Right now, before we go any further, we want to give you a chance to uh, maybe not step out of your seat, but maybe just like turn in place and see how many uh, hands you can shake while you're standing there. But make somebody feel welcome, greet them, and we're going to come back and worship some more together this morning. Shout your praises loud I was lost in darkness when you pulled me out I would sing forever of your love come down I once was blind, I could not see Chains I've seen had shackled me, but God in heaven heard my plea, and Jesus, Jesus, rescue me, oh Jesus, Jesus, rescue me. I will sing forever, oh your love come down, with my hands to heaven, shout your praises loud. I was lost in darkness when you pulled me out. I will sing forever of oh, love come down. Now grace so sweet 
He floods my soul in hope eternal. One let go, my daddy raised in Calvary. Cause Jesus, Jesus, rescue me. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, rescue me. I will sing forever of the love come down With my hands to heaven, shout your praises loud I was lost in that when you pulled me out I will sing forever of your love come down Well, there's a home Beyond the sky, a song we'll sing for all the time. The grave is empty, I am free. Cause Jesus, Jesus, rescue me. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, rescue me. Sing it up. I will sing forever. Oh, your love come down with my hands to heaven. Shout your praises loud. I was lost in darkness when you pulled me out. I will sing forever. Oh, your love come down. I will sing forever. Oh, your love come down with my hands to heaven. Shout your praises loud. I was lost in darkness when you pulled me out. I will sing forever of your love come down. I will sing forever of your love come down. I will sing forever of your love come down.
This is the praise, make a dead man walk again. Open the grave, I'm coming out. I'm gonna live, gonna live again. Open the grave, I'm coming out. I'm gonna live, gonna live again. Open the grave, I'm coming out. I'm gonna live, gonna live again. This is the sound of tribal's This morning, you can be seated. Hundreds of years before anyone had heard of anyone named Jesus of Nazareth, a prophet named Isaiah delivered a message of good news to an oppressed nation. And this is what he said. The Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is on me because he has sent me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the captives, to proclaim freedom for those in darkness. He has sent me to declare the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, and to provide for those who grieve in Zion. To proclaim that those who have ashes will have a crown of beauty. To give them the oil of joy instead of mourning. To give them a garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair you will receive, instead of your shame, a double portion. And instead of your despair, you will receive a double portion of praise, and you will rejoice in your inheritance. And you will inherit a double portion in your land, and everlasting joy will be yours. This is what the prophet Isaiah proclaimed to a struggling nation. And that nation continued to struggle for hundreds of years, never forgetting the promise of their God. For they knew that only God could cause the kind of reversals that were promised, the kind of reversals that they envisioned that were given to them some day. Then, Hundreds of years later, among that nation, among those people, word began to spread. Word began to spread about a strange man, a day laborer from a no-name town who could do miraculous things. A strange man who seemed to be able to control the wind and the waves and even the fish in the sea. A man who could create from nothing, in whose presence food and drink never seemed to run out, and a man who could heal. A man who could reverse sickness and dying. And as eyewitness reports started to spread, so did the crowds, and they grew, and one after another, he healed them. Sickness after sickness, he healed them. And the people asked, who is this man that he can reverse death and decay? And then one day, in the temple, this strange man stood up to read from the scriptures, and he turned to those familiar words of the prophet Isaiah. And he said, the spirit of the sovereign Lord is on me for he has sent me to proclaim good news for the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the captives, to proclaim freedom for those who live in darkness, to restore blind to see. He has sent me 
to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And then this man, Jesus of Nazareth, stood and turning to the crowd, he said, today, in your presence, this promise has been fulfilled. I'm walking to. If you 
walked out of the grave I walked into it what the prophet Isaiah wrote. Who has believed our message? To whom has the Lord revealed his powerful arm? My servant grew up in the Lord's presence like a tender green shoot, like a root in dry ground. There was nothing beautiful or majestic about his appearance, nothing to attract us to him. He was despised and rejected, a man of sorrows, acquainted with deepest grief. We turned our backs on him and looked the other way. He was despised, and we did not care. Yet it was our weaknesses he carried. It was our sorrows that weighed him down. And we thought his troubles were a punishment from God, a punishment for his own sins. But he was pierced for our rebellion crushed for our sins. He was beaten so we could be whole. He was whipped so we could be healed. See on the hill of Calvary my Savior bled for Jesus set me free Look at the wounds that give me light Grace flowing from his side No greater sacrifice What he's done What he's done All the glory and the honor to the Son my sins are forgiven, my future is heaven, I praise God for what he's done. Sing for the freedom he has won, even death is dead and Throne of majesty, the 
the Father's will complete. He reigns in victory. This is what the prophet Isaiah wrote. In Jerusalem, he will remove the cloud of gloom, the shadow of death that hangs over the earth. He will swallow up death forever. The sovereign Lord will wipe away all tears. He will remove forever all insults and mockery against his land and people. The Lord has spoken. In that day, the people will proclaim, this is our God. We trusted in him and he saved us. This is the Lord in whom we trusted. Let us rejoice in the salvation he brings. We stand together, church. Let's sing one more song before pastor comes to speak. A song that many of us know grew up singing again. Let's lift our voices again. i 
Good morning. Yeah. Happy Easter. Man, so good. It's so good. Y'all were smart. You came at 9 o'clock when I'm fresh. I haven't preached two in a few months, so I don't know. Second service. I am looking forward to it, though. My goodness. We have been, for the past weeks, talking about the way of Jesus to Easter. And we've come through the turning of the tables in the temple. The perfume on Jesus' feet. Betrayal in the garden. The mockery of a trial. The suffering that went with it. And then on Wednesday, we simply read the story of the crucifixion. All so we could get right here. So we could wake up Easter morning and celebrate the resurrection. Sing about it, shout about it. Yeah, and clap about it. Yeah, you were, yeah. It is the center of everything in the Christian life and story. We try and put ourselves back in the moment, what it would have been like to have been there that first morning. I wonder what the hours after were like. As news began to spread and the realization or the part realization that Jesus is back? (laughs) We don't know a lot about those moments, but we know something. 
We know that on that very first day, that night, Easter night, the disciples had all gotten together. Well, not all of them. Judas, of course, had taken his own life. And Thomas, Thomas wasn't there. The disciples were together and they were in a house and the door was locked because they were afraid. And then Jesus was there. There. Physically there. They could touch him. They could talk to him. He just showed up and he didn't knock and he didn't use a key. He just showed up to prove to them that he was indeed resurrected. <laughs> they were beside themselves. They go and they find Thomas and they tell him. And, well, this is where Thomas gets his everlasting nickname. You know, Doubting Thomas. Let me read to you that piece of the story from John 20, picking up in verse 24. It says, Now Thomas also known as Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, we've seen the Lord. But he said, no, no he didn't. He said unto them, unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my finger where the nails were and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. No, 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 no. You guys are losing it. What are you doing? You're falling for it. Don't you know how this works? He's not alive. No, no, really, Thomas, he's alive. Listen, I'll tell you when I'll believe he's alive. I'll believe he's alive when I can put my finger in the hole in his hand. That's sort of a objectionable thing to say, but Thomas was just being real. It's not that he didn't want to believe, he just couldn't quite get there. I love this next part. Verse 26 says, a week later, his disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, <laughs> This is great because Thomas has, been, Thomas has been talking all week. No, 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 no. And Jesus knows. So he says to Thomas, Put your finger here. See? My hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Stop doubting and believe. And Thomas said to him, My Lord and my God. My Lord and my God. Something in that moment changed everything. Doubting Thomas. Doubting Thomas gives one of the clearest declarations of the divinity of Jesus ever. My Lord, my God. I, I thought uh, we, we might start by talking about doubt because I think doubt has a little bit of a bad name. It's sort of got a bad rap, especially in Christian circles. But I think that's mostly because we mistake doubt for unbelief. And they're not the same thing. See, unbelief is the opposite of faith, but doubt is something different. Doubt, doubt is, is struggling. Doubt doesn't know. Doubt is, is questioning. Doubt is seeking. And if I could, doubt is a little bit hopeful. Can Thomas at least get credit for showing up in the house? and asking the hard questions. See, doubt is, doubt is like a, a door. It's a good place to 
start. It's just not the place we're supposed to stop. Doubt is, doubt is where we step into the story and we're like, I'm, listen, I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm hoping, I'm wondering, but I'm not, I'm not sure. I'm not there yet. You gotta, you gotta help me, Lord. And, and that's what doubt is. Doubt's like when you, you walk into an ice cream shop. It's that time of year again, right? You don't know what you want, but you want something. You just, that's the beauty of an ice cream shop. They got that case full of, you know, temptation. And it's just, you walk in and you're, you're not sure, but you want something. And you've come to look and you're exploring. And, and when you're not sure, you know what they've got? They got these. Those are beautiful, aren't they? You're like me, you love those. So you can't take this to stop and shop in the freezer section, right? You can't, you can't like peel the wrapper off of Ben and Jerry's, and, but you can go in and you can say, I don't know, I don't know. I want something, might be that rocky road. Let me try that. The peanut butter cup, uh, peanut butter cup, almond joy. I went and got these yesterday. I did it for you, folks. I, I, I did. I, someone had to sacrifice and make the trip to the ice cream shop. And the strange request, can I get a bag full? I almost asked him for a couple thousand to give you all this weekend, but I thought that would probably be pushing my luck. You see, it's, a, it, it's where we, we, we come and we, we, we taste. That's what the word says, taste and see, taste and see, taste and see. That's what Easter is. It's, it's come, taste, see, look, watch, explore. Sometimes it's the, the story of the evidence and we need to read one of those four biographies and we walk through the story of Jesus and we, we see his public execution. We see the guarded tomb. We see the resurrection witnessed by hundreds of people and told down through the ages. And we see the lives of these formerly cowardly disciples transformed forever. Only the resurrected Jesus could make that happen. But here's my guess. Most of us are like Thomas. We think we need some like hard evidence. <laughs> I gotta, I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to touch his, his wounds. Did you notice something in that story? Thomas was all, I gotta touch him. I got I to gotta put my hand in the wound. And then Jesus shows up, and he's done. He doesn't touch him. He just, he's like, he had encountered Jesus Christ. And, and, and my guess is that the, that the tasting, the, the taste and see, the, the exploring, the evidence, the is the encounter with Jesus. It's something that happens in you. It's something that happens in the midst of worship, in the reading of the prophecies, in the listening to the scripture. There's, there's something that happens, and it's something profoundly spiritual. It's something that we struggle to explain. Our, our analytical, logical, reliable minds get upended because we've, we've encountered Jesus. And, and we've encountered him in a way we never expected. And this is why I love, I love verse 29. Jesus tells him, he says, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Have not seen. That's that's you. Like, like, we weren't there that day. We read the stories. We see the evidences. But we, in, we encounter Jesus. We, you see, there's something, there's something deep down in us that wants to stand at that doorway of doubt and wrestle with it because there's something in us that's looking for more. There's something that just is like, there, there's got to be something else. And we're looking and we're listening for an encounter with Jesus Christ. 
And that's what he's offering here. He's, he's saying, listen, blessed, those, those people who, who weren't there, who have met me, who have encountered me, and have believed, they're blessed. Their, their lives are, are changed forever. I, I want to read two more verses to give you just a, a, a taste, <laughs> or sort of take out the spoon, because it's what, it's what Jesus does next. It, it's like he's, he's gone from speaking just to the disciples and now he's speaking to, to all of, of history and he's showing us. Here's what it says in verse 30. Jesus performed many other signs, John writes, in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and then this, and that by believing, you may have life in his name. Life in his name. But by believing, you, and you, and you, and you, and me, might have life. That's an odd thing to say to people that are living. You can have life. Well, I'm already alive, but, but we actually don't even think it's odd when we read it because we instinctively know this. We, we know you can be alive and not fully alive. You know what I'm saying, don't you? We can be alive and going through the motions and living the life, but not fully alive. We're looking, searching. This is why Jesus said in John chapter 10, verse 10, I came so that they could have life and life to the full. That's why we talk about living fully, because this is what Jesus is offering. And it's what Easter is all about. Easter, at its very core, gives us a taste of what life looks like. Not just living, living fully. You see, Easter, Easter does two things. It tells us two stories. It gives us a taste of two things that every one of us needs. One, it resolves the past. Who among us doesn't have a past, a story, a brokenness, a failure, a shame that we need relief and release from? I love that song that Al sang a few moments ago, Ain't No Grave. He sent me that a few weeks back and said, what do you think of this? And I'm like, oh my goodness, I love this song. Do you know when that was written? 1934. By a guy named Claude Eli. He became a, a preacher, kind of a circuit-riding preacher in Appalachia. But he wrote it when he was 12 years old. <laughs> he had tuberculosis, and they'd given him the deadly diagnosis, and Somehow this 12-year-old sits down and writes at least part of this song. Years later, he would become a preacher and a singer, and he would, he would record it. But he wrote, Ain't No Grave. But did you catch the earliest words of it? Did you see him on the screen? Shame is a robber, cruel as the grave. Shame the past. But Easter is the story of how God steps into our brokenness and our shame and our past and all of that stuff that we just can't get over. And in a moment, on the cross, he resolves it. He forgives it. This is the story of Easter. But he does something else. He, 
He resolves the past, and then the resurrection is a promise about the future, right? It's, it's this promise of life now and life forever. It's the promise that because he lives, we have access to this gift of eternal life. Again, I go back to Claude Eli's song because it kind of traces this journey, right, from shame of the past through the grave. And then in that, in that great line, it says that, that, that he went down to the grave and he took back all the keys. I love that picture. Took back all the keys to death. Some people believe that this was actually the last song Johnny Cash ever recorded before his death. He published it shortly after the group did. I can see why. The past, the future, past and future, past and the future. You see, when our past is resolved and our future has been promised it gives us the ability to live here in the present that's the the story of Easter it's the hope of Easter you know why we stand at the door you know why Thomas shows up in the room because we we hope we want we're, we're we're waiting, we're, we're believing, we're, we're leaning in and wondering. And, and the reason we're doing it is because Jesus, Jesus, Jesus is knocking. That's what Revelation 3 says. Down about verse 20, he says, listen, I'm standing at the door and knocking. If any of you, if any of you hear me and open the door, I'll come in. I'll come in. That's Easter. Easter is the story of the resurrection. It's the story of how God took our broken past and all of that struggle and said, listen, I got this. You don't have to live in bondage to your past. You don't have to live with the weight of shame and guilt and brokenness and failure and sin in your past. I can take that for you and I can secure your future. That's the story of the resurrection. That's what Jesus does. That's why it's our hope. Behold, I stand door and knock so that anyone who opens it welcomes me in I will come in to them I love that an encounter with Jesus that that moment we've been listening for the knocking the knocking we hear him we open our lives to him. And in a simple act of faith, we say yes. And our lives are forever changed. Not because of what we did, because of what he did. Would you pray with me? This Easter morning, in a moment of quiet, we we have a small chance to listen, to listen for his voice, for his knocking. Maybe Maybe this moment is is your moment for an encounter with Jesus. I don't know how your story has 
played out to get you right to this moment, but I know that I know he shows up in our life and he knocks. Maybe this Easter morning you're ready to say yes to him. And if that's you, I want to give you a moment before we sing another song and we get on with the rest of Easter Sunday. This may be your moment to meet him. Say yes and welcome him into your life. If so, I want to lead you in a prayer. There's no magic words you can repeat that make something so. It's a prayer of faith from your heart. It's an opening of your life to him, saying yes to his gift. Forgive. You might pray something like this, Dear Lord, this Easter Sunday, I hear you knocking the door of my heart. And I want to welcome you in. Jesus Christ, I accept your gift of forgiveness once and for all, lifting the weight of my past forever. Jesus, I believe in you. I believe that you died for me. I believe that you rose from the grave. That you're alive today. And I invite you into my life. Yes, Jesus. I pray in your precious name. In a moment, we're going to stand together and sing that great song we sang just a moment ago. Jesus paid it all, man. Such beautiful words in there. But I want to invite you to do something. Uh, if you're here, or maybe you're watching online, and you just took that step. You took a step of faith, and you're not even fully sure what all of that means but you've said yes to Jesus Christ and invited him into your life. You may be here and like, this is your first time in church ever. Or you may have grown up in church all of your life. But today, you took a step of faith for yourself. If you did that, I want to ask you to do something with me. That decision is personal and private and it can only be done between you and God, but it's meant to be celebrated with others. So I'd love to be the one that celebrates it with you. So here's my invitation. In the chair in front of you, there's a little connect card. There's a place on that says, I've committed my life to Christ. If you just fill that out and check it off and take it to our welcome desk in the lobby. Look for the sign that says, start here. We've got a Bible and a reading guide we'd love to send you home with today. It's just a gift to get you started on a journey of discovery, and we think it's the best way we can celebrate with you. Why don't you stand with me? We're going to sing this song, share a couple of things coming up as we go. Next Sunday, we're kicking off a new series. I hope you'll, I hope you'll plan to be back as we jump into a new season here as a church community. Let's sing together. And when before the throne I stand in him complete Jesus died my soul to save 
my lips shall still repeat. Lift it up with us. Jesus, pay it all, all to him I owe. Sin and love to cleanse and save, he washed it Jesus, pay Jesus paid it all, all.